Fitolaka dodecandra grows above 1,500 meters in Ethiopia and shows a wide variety. For example, in morphology, it can be green to reddish, or in anatomy, it contains needle-shaped crystals which can be hairy to completely smooth, and chemistry, like the difference in molluscicidal or snail-killing potency. Moreover, long staminate males and short staminate female plants occur, of which the last produces berries in abundance. Male plants occasionally produce berries too. Initial studies have shown that fully grown, non-ripe berries contained the highest molluscicidal potency. Thus, berries were harvested at that stage and dried in the open on tables in a greenhouse. Larvae of the genus Gitona, which is a drosophilid fly, can attack the soap berry. Some soap berries are not affected. Their hairy skin hinders the insect to deposit eggs. While mining larvae are killed by needle-shaped crystals or raphide in the parenchymatic tissue. On the basis of this knowledge, three types were selected. Type 3, which is green and lightly hairy. Type 17, which is reddish and smooth. And type 44, which is green and hairy. Because of the large variety in morphology, chemistry, and resistance against the stem borer, propagation had to be developed through cuttings, thus making clones of the selected types. Type 44 was the easiest to propagate. On the compound grounds of the Institute of Pathobiology, mainly type 44 was planted out. The plants were trimmed in an open form for optimal berry production. 1978 brought us ample quantities of berries for our experiments, while after the rainy season of 1979, large quantities of berries could be harvested for treatment of water bodies in Chakorti, Bati, Salmeni and Welo province in early 1980 and in 1981. We tested in stagnant water in the institute's pond and checked laboratory results in practice. We had positive 48-hour recovery results. Our place of operation was in Welo province. All sites were close to the town of Bati. We did tests in various stagnant small waterfall ponds at Chakorti. We started with collecting Biomphalaria fefuri test snails. Ato Abram Reda is preparing a control cage containing 50 Biomphalaria fefuri snails. A calculated quantity of berry powder for 100% snail kill was applied on the basis of the estimated volume of each pond. After treating these ponds with a 100% molluscicidal berry concentration, no live snails could be found on the surface the next day, only dead snails at the bottom of each pond. People were always very much interested. Children were given sweets for their help in leaving the test cages where they were placed. This is the market in Bati, where endot, as a substitute for soap, was sold for washing clothes and cooking utensils. One can see that the unripe berries were on offer. This is the test site in Bati, during the dry season early January 1980. 
With an interval of four weeks, this river was treated twice. One can see the low water level of the stream. 650 meters of the river were monitored, a stretch much frequented by villagers and containing thousands of infected Biomphalaria pfeiffer snails. In various places on this stretch of river, thousands of live snails could be seen floating on the surface of the water. Our barrel, containing 65 liters of a 16 hours soaked soap berry powder suspension, is siphoning its content into a narrow, turbulent fall in the river, thus causing a steady mixing of the suspension with the river water. Treatment always started around 8 o'clock in the morning. Siphoning was adjusted in correspondence with the river water discharge and the desired level of molluscicidal activity. Foam developed shortly after our application point. Here you see foam development in our first water body. After five hours, the siphon started to deliver irregularly because of insufficient liquid. In all our treatments, the soap berry deposit was emptied from the barrel. In this way, it was achieved that during a period between five and six hours, a cloud of endot active ingredient was able to treat the river and make it possible that snails were optimally exposed at the desired lethal dose of soap berry active ingredient. Further down the river, we found dead fish. This fish is identified as Discognatus bloodfordii, or Gara. There is more foam development further down the river. The fish were still alive further downstream, but acted alarmed. Fish are a good indicator how far the so very active ingredient had come in our stretch of river. Here we see dead snails floating on the surface. There is nothing left from the pre-treatment situation, where thousands of snails were living in clusters harmoniously together, while making bubbling noises as if they were talking to each other. We collected cages with 50 control snails after 24 hours. Ato Negash Gameda is collecting one of the hidden snail control cages from under the vegetation. The snails were placed in jars with clean water and given time to recover. We see Dr. Lowe and Dr. Lages in my counterpart. These are the jars with mainly dead snails from the lower reaches of the monitored river. Some snails are still bleeding. These children were enjoying the water that was hopefully less infested with Bilharzia circariae. Women and children use the water to cool and wash their feet. Again, hopefully with much less chance to be infected with Bilharzia circari. For self-help purposes, endotype 44 plants were given to the town of Bati in order to help them treat the river as was shown during two consecutive treatments of the river in January 15th and February 12th, 1918. And because of lack of snails in Bati River, one treatment of Salmani River close to Bati on February 3rd, 1981. 
Berries of these type 44 soulberry plants were meant to be used in the future for self-help snail treatment of Bati River.